this is the I'm best in the egg, bro. Smash the like button if you hear me. The new me, keep me on TV. Uh, 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 People deluded, I'm back again. Apparently, Arsenal have identified two new sporting directors to replace Edu Gaspar. Simeone and Zaghi, who recently beat us for Inter Milan, has been linked with replacing Mikel Arteta. I definitely don't believe that. We've got some Isaac stuff. Obviously, Benjamin White has currently had a minor procedure and faces six to eight weeks out. Apparently, there's been an update where Ricardo Calafuri and Tokihiro Tomiyasu are concerned. So we've got one, two bits and pieces to go over. Smash the like button, get the creative juices flowing, turn on your notification bells because despite it being the international break, the grind don't stop people. Give me 30 seconds or less, you know, that's what she said, and I'll share my screen with you guys. Now, let's crack on. Now, apparently, AS Monaco CEO Tiago Squero, forgive me for mispronunciations, linked with key Arsenal role. Now, since Edu Gaspar's left, it's come out that, you know, Jason Atto will be kind of filling in for him. Edu will be serving a six-month gardening period. We've been linked with Murta Saka, Thomas Rizitsky, now Mr. Tiago, and actually the guy that's at Sociedad, which we'll move on across this video to get to. With Edu on his way out, the sporting director role at Arsenal will become vacant, according to Gianluca Di Marzio, who said we wouldn't get Calafuri, so I don't know if he knows who he's talking about no shade as monaco ceo tiago scuro is being considered for the role scuro arrived at monaco from arbery Bra bragantino forgive me at the at the start of last season in collaboration with the outgoing paul mitchell who recruited him he appointed adil rutter as manager whilst also bringing in the likes of denis Zakaria, baligan and Kier, his managerial choice as well as the recruitment are currently proving successful now naturally yeah when you just quickly, people, again, this doesn't mean he does or doesn't know what he's doing, but he's obviously progressed through the ranks. He's worked at Red Bull. He's obviously worked at Monaco. These clubs obviously find players, develop them and sell them for profit. Now, as much as I would like the household names, you know, the Jokoreses, the Isaacs, the Nico Williams, anyone that is linked with a move to Arsenal, could it be worth identifying these gems? Because where you look at Jokorez, half of these guys that we waffle about, they had to start somewhere in it. So could we look to do that? If we could get him and poach a couple of the scouts from Brighton, we might be able to find emerging talents that make it in the first team. Or there's nothing wrong with signing a young player loaning him out for a couple of years, developing him, you know, in an in an ideal world, someone like Marquinhos, forgive me, but clearly not good enough, right? If that three million could have been turned into 30, then that gets reinvested and we do what we're doing. I personally think Arsenal won't do it, but we need to move to a multi-club structure, um, which we're going a bit south. If we're not going to do that, then maybe, you know, in terms of us be wanting to be self-financing and that, what we do in terms of sales, you know, which needs to get better in last summer, I guess, with Eddie and, and, and obviously Smith Rowe and once upon a time with Balligan in the right direction, could we find players that obviously you sign up, you sign an unknown entity, we want them to progress into the first team. You know, we'd love to have an unknown striker or a winger at this moment in time that could do the job. I think I speak for every Arsenal fan where you want household names, but if you can find players that are not known and they go and do their thing, great. And also what I would like to say is as well, now, it's, it's it's easier said than done, but where you look at the Liverpool mo uh, model, yeah, where you could say we've kind of, not to their extreme, but done it to a degree, you know, people turned their nose up at Mane, people turned their nose up at Salah. Before Robertson was at Liverpool, no one was really screaming and shouting. So could we go for some players that their stocks are quite low and obviously they go on and do great things? There's many different ways to go about things, but yeah, we've been linked with him, people. Um Rizitsky and Murta Saka, as you see at the end of this, of all souls, their names are still being rang in that regards, people. He's apparently known as a tough negotiator as well. Now, moving away from one person to another, apparently Arsenal Sport, I don't know why the mouse is moving, but Arsenal Sporting Director Hunt takes big twists as ideal Edu replacement quits current job. Apparently, you know, Roberto Alebi is leaving Sociedad. You know, he actually has worked with Mikel Arteta before. Obviously, we dealt with him across the summer where we tried to sign Mikel Moreno and as we know people we are obviously looking for an upgrade well an upgrade ideally on Edu or a replacement senior figures apparently in North London will go after the best of the best to replace Edu while there are no concrete links between Olebe and the Gunners at this stage the magnet the multiple sorry the multitude apologies of factors points towards the Spaniard trying his hand at life in the Premier League now 
you would imagine when, you know, we've heard the executives and actually Mikel Arteta have flown out to America, spoke with the Cronkies. You'd imagine contracts are on the agenda as a somewhat mid-season progress report. And evidently how and who replaces Edu has to be there really and truly. Um, if we skip to the athletic people and look at Alabe, you know, we'll kind of get into the, the meat pause of this. Apparently he spent time outside his homeland. He's worked with the Aspire Academy in Qatar and Ecuadorian club Independiente del Valle and apparently he speaks reasonable English. I mean, football's a universal language. Arsenal have done extensive business with Sociedad during Alabe's time at the helm. The 57-year-old was the figurehead of their transfer department when they sold Mikel Marino and Odegaard to the Gunners and when Nacho, Monreal and Kieran Tierney headed in the opposite direction. Some say he's actually worked with the golden generation of Ecuadorian football people. So whether it's Colombia or Ecuador, you know, you look at Caicedo, you look at that. Who's that other you? Is it Perez or Pezes or something like that that's at Chelsea? Can we start dominating emerging markets, people? Ideally, you get the household names and you get the emerging targets. That's what you see Manchester City doing. You know, they get the best young players in England. Obviously, you know, people slip through the net like Cole Palmer. They get the best kind of recruitments from overseas. They've got Alciverdi coming from uh, River Plate. And obviously, they're still signing quote-unquote household names. So naturally, I'm not saying to copy City's model, but you need to look at those who are in the realm of where you want to go in life, people. Um Apparently, Mikel Arteta himself was snapped up by Alabe during his playing days with the former midfielder trading Rangers for Sociedad in 2004, people. Assistant Sporting Director Jason Atto has stepped into Edu's shoes at the Emirates during his period of Garden League leave. The Gunners are understood to be relaxed about appointing his replacement, opting to take a steady approach rather than rushing to bring in a candidate who does not tick every box. I mean, whoever that is, you need to deal with multiple contracts. We need to see what we can do in January in terms of ingoings. Obviously, the summer the same and there's going to be a lot of outgoings. Tierney's still on the books. You're going to have to make a decision over Partey and Jorginho, the Salibas, the Gabriels, the uh, Gabriel Martinelli's, the Bacayo Sackers, their contracts are running out and I'm sure there's a bunch of other bits and pieces that we need to do, people. Um, so let me know currently who would you go for? Would you go with the Sociedad guy? Would you go with the Monaco guy? You look at the recruits Monaco have, have signed and sold on for money. Could that be something? Um Apparently, Roberto Alerbe to leave Real Sociedad as Arsenal seek sporting director. Club hierarchy set to begin conversations about a replacement for Edu this week. And the highly respected Spaniard has worked with Mikel Arteta before. I mean, our season's a bit cloudy at the moment on a sporting front. It is the international break. We have typical international break fashion. You've seen and heard several things around injuries. Obviously, you're hearing a lot about, you know, executives at Arsenal meeting up, planning towards January, and the Jokarezes, the Isaacs, the Sesco's, the Kudases, all of these guys are being linked with us people. So, is there any truth, or is it creative journalism, or is it PR people? I don't know, people. But for what it's worth, apparently he's one of the most respected administrators in European football, with sources in Spain believing the 57-year-old would be considered for the vacant position at Arsenal, or Although that process is still at a very early stage. I mean, we see it with the coaching staff, you know, Mikel Arteta and everybody else. If you could get a Spanish guy in and they got that ethos and the way of looking at stuff, I'm all for that. And what I would say is I want it to be a football. I'm not saying Edu isn't a footballing man, but you need a footballing man rather than a tick box guy in that role, people. And, you know, you look at the work he's done. Evidently, he's significantly more experienced than Edu in this role. I personally believe you needed Mikel Arteta at, you know, young manager learning everything think and then obviously that guy, you know, someone who can tell Mikel, maybe this isn't the right deal. That isn't the right deal. Uh, we're not going to get David Dean. I'm not saying Mikel Arteta is Arsene Wenger, but it feels like David, you need, if Mikel Arteta was Arsene Wenger, you need that David Dean, someone to pull him in from the madness people when he's signing a lot of left backs and goalies and 65 million on Kai Havertz. I'm not criticising any of this people. I'm just saying Sometimes could the money be spent elsewhere because it does feel like as good as Mikel Arteta is and the bad, he's kind of the he, he kind of only gets his own way, really, which is good. But maybe we could utilize funds in other ways and not keep having the same conversations that we're having as Arsenal fans. I mean, experience is overrated, but it can't be overstated. And I, I do think people are quick to get on Edu's back. I do think he's done a lot of good, but you know, you're looking at Edu's legacy off his 
on his own entity and you can't really see it if i'm honest fair enough the club do say collaboration Alabe has been instrumental in making real sociedad one of the best run clubs in europe we want to be that with an excellent youth system while overseeing impressive signings like david silver martin odegaard and Isaac. Isaac was bought from dortmund for 10 million euros in brackets 8.3 million in 2019 before newcastle activated his 70 million release clause three years later i mean where would we be if we took a chance on Isaac before he's obviously done his thing here we all know Arteta knows Elabe people apparently he probably wants a new challenge he's felt he's achieved everything at his current club uh, once again Arsenal's hierarchy will meet American owners this week to discuss Edu's successor and the next two transfer windows as we've gone over people um, and at the moment you know with Benjamin White's injury with Tommy, Thomas Partey playing at right back at times with Saka and Declan Rice pulling out of England and obviously what we've done or not done on the sport in front there's a lot of talking points and, and fallout talking points where the club that we love is concerned people the 57 year old once again he's he helped prepare qatar for the world cup he's guided the development of ecuador's current golden generation so he knows about developing markets obviously you know there's a spanish influence in football anyways but where you look at I don't know what it would be, but the area of Sociedad, you see Xabi Alonso, Emre, Alabe, Mikel Arteta, it seems to be things, people. And there seems to be a growing influence at the club with that, with David Raya, with the coaching staff, with Mikel Moreno, with obviously Arteta. And I don't mind that. In the same way, if the manager was Brazilian, I'd be shocked if there weren't some Brazilian practices we was doing at the club, people. So Alabe clearly knows what he's doing, people. He helped, you know, produce the Hinkapis and Caicedos. We'd love Chelsea's Caicedo with the team at the moment. He's He's obviously helped Sociedad sell players for a profit, have a good identity, you know, obviously promote players through their local youth system and obviously find players from elsewhere. You know, Odegaard did his thing at Sociedad. Mikel Moreno was at Dor Dortmund and all these things. He went back over there. Isaac was, you know, struggling a bit in Germany. It's fair to say he's not struggling anymore. Um, and you'd imagine there'd be a lot of people interested in this individual if he was available. There's several kind of good sales he's done, as we know, people. So... Yeah, man, you can see a lot of the good work he's done. So I wouldn't be against it, especially when you look at him and the Monaco lad. They've said they're tough negotiators. They do say that with Eddie. Apparently, Matarazzi says Simeone Inzaghi is the right profile to take over from Mikel Arteta. In terms of getting over the line, potentially, where you look at inverted fullbacks, overlapping centre-halves, and the fact that he's won a league title, I'm not necessarily against that. If Arteta did leave tomorrow, I must admit, this man would feature on my list. The first would be Xabi Alonso, which we're not getting. I'd be looking at someone like this, people. Um... I'm an Inter fan, so I hope he stays at Inter because his job is not finished. But I think he has a good profile for the Premier League. You never know. City might be looking at him because I don't know how long Pep's going to be there. Arteta is one of the best at Arsenal, but Arsenal is one club who Simeone could be good for. Manchester United too. What about City? Nobody knows what Pep will do. I just hope he stays at Inter. Fair play, people. So, yeah, moving away from that. I'm tired of speaking about Nico Williams, but nonetheless, Romano has confirmed that Barcelona are looking ahead to the summer, which on the face of it, it doesn't appear that they need Nico Williams, but I would argue they do. You've got Rafina looking great, the young players, the Gavis, the, the Pedris, the, the Liamaus, you know, is it Casado, you know, uh, Kubasi, a bunch of them, Balde, they, they've got a good squad, people. If they could marry Nico Williams and probably a central midfielder, they'd be all right, people. So, yeah, Barcelona are not going away from Nico Williams. They've also been linked with Rafa Liao and they're trying to get new deals for Pedri and Gavi. I don't really care about that, but, you know, I'm sure we're all holding some hope that there's a surprise where Nico Williams is concerned. Arsenal and Manchester United are set to go head-to-head -head in the transfer market to sign the most valuable free agent in the game. We're still linked with Sane, who one minute he's going to leave Bayern Munich, the next he's going to, you know, leave on a free. At this moment in time, you've got Kimmich, Joshua, Jonathan David, apologies, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Alfonso Davies. There's a couple of decent free pickups. I mean, if Real Madrid get Trent and Davies, they're laughing even more so. You know, you've got Mbappe for free, which isn't quite working at this moment in time. Man United have been linked with Braithwaite and Kirk as two players we've once upon a time been linked with. What's this? Mikel Arteta hit panic button. Ar Arsenal, sorry, Arsenal hit panic button as striker search intensifies. What does this mean? According to sources close to the Emirates, Arsenal management have decided they can't afford to wait until the summer to address the squad's goal-scoring struggles. 
I mean, it's a bit late in that. We're linked with Visa. I mean, we've been linked with a lot of players. Visa, his teammate there in Buermo, John Duran, who's still second fiddle to Oli Watkins, Isaac, Sesco, Jokerez, the list goes on. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible to sign these players in January, but from what we all know of the January market, it's improbable. Although we failed to get Vlahovic, we failed to get Locatelli in January, we failed to get Mudrik, but I mentioned those because we, uh, well, it appeared that we was prepared because we was convinced to put the money down. So I wouldn't rule that out. And to be fair, I'm sure we signed a Bamian. And once upon a time, in what was a big money signing for us, Arshavin in the January transfer market. So you never know. But as we know, nobody in an ideal world wants to sell or buy players in January. You know, a lot of players want to go and get more first team football, falling out with the manager. You know, there might be injuries or, or gaps that weren't addressed in the summer or have become apparent as the season's gone on. It's a reactive market. So you do have players that have one foot out the door. But then you look at the Yokoreses, I would say, they're not going to want to do deal or sell him mid-season, really and truly, especially as his stock goes higher and higher. They've just lost Amarin Sporting. They're not going to lose him. So you have to pay an inconvenience fee. And what I mean by that is clearly their stance in terms of their willingness and their openness to negotiate would be a lot tougher. So you have to pay an inconvenience fee, which for me, if I'm Sporting, I'm telling Arsenal, City, Man United, Chelsea... Anyone that's been linked with him, Barcelona and Bayern now, if you want him in January, there's his release clause. If you activate his release clause and he wants to join, our hands are tied. If not, forget about that. In the summer, we can talk. So we've been linked with Visa once again. Whether that comes to something, I don't know. Apparently, Isaac has broken his silence amid, you know, Newcastle contract extension talks um, being shelved and obviously linked with several clubs. You'd imagine several clubs are monitoring stuff. He remains keen to play in the Champions League. Arsenal is seen as a potential suitor if the Magpies fail to return to such. He does still have three years left on his deal, people. Apparently, Newcastle are not in contract talks with him, people. And he insists he's focused on Newcastle. I mean, what else could he say mid-season? It'd be disrespectful to say anything else throughout my career i've never talked or commented on a move rumors happen during the season there have been many such years where it's been talked about it doesn't affect me i'm commenting on my situation in newcastle i've never had any problem here i am focused on the task there and we'll have a fantastic season there are still great opportunities for that i have no thoughts about anything else which is true he's also said is that situation is slightly more complex than anthony gordon who they got to sign a new deal now i believe newcastle personally will have, have to sacrifice a gamarez or is that you know to you know simply put get more money make the balance sheet look a bit better so that they can kind of improve the squad and then you know i guess the target the next is i can go mares really really and truly in the same way we've got saliba and if we don't achieve what we need to achieve the real madrid's all of these are circling newcastle naturally when you've got quality players there's going to be i don't like to say bigger clubs because newcastle are a massive club but you get where i'm going people um I think Eddie Howe said, I think with Alex, he's got a long term contract anyways. And we have to be really careful regarding our spending due to PSR. It's not a clear cut situation. Every club will make every decision. Sorry, we make as a football club has a knock on effect for contract renewals. There is a knock on effect for PSR. And we have to make sure we don't put ourselves in a position where we can't act freely in the transfer windows because of what we've done with individual player contracts. We, of course, love Alex and are desperate for him to stay at Newcastle for many years and score loads of goals for us. But I don't see a short term issue with his contract. Fair enough, which is true. And you'd imagine Newcastle will fight tooth and nail to get him to sign a new deal. Apparently, Arsenal and Chelsea have been described as long-term admirers. Barcelona, Liverpool, City and Juventus are also apparently keeping tabs on the Swedish and Newcastle forward, who has five goals and two assists in 11 games so far. And great addition, he scored a header against us, which Arteta loves a header, people. Arsenal have begun internal discussions over a new contract for Saliba, according to French media. He will sign for Real Madrid one day, but, you know, if we don't make a 100 Hundred million or something close to that, and he, this guy doesn't go down for many years as our most expensive export. Then we've done something wrong. I hope Saliba stays for many years. Obviously, I can't. Real Madrid's the pinnacle of football. If you've got opportunities to win leagues and Champions Leagues and play in the strongest squad and play for the biggest club in the world, what can anyone tell William Saliba? It would suck though if, you know, the bunch of players like Saliba and actually Mikel Arteta, where Arsenal have been challenging and somewhat decent, and there's you know, stars of tomorrow, certain things. If we don't get any sort of history made, it's an L. But yeah, man, it's a, it's an issue with Saliba, really. To have two years left on this deal in the summer, it does give you ants in your pants. Although you can't really stop things. Contracts are always going to run down, people. Um, so yeah, we need to get things going, people. Naturally, Real Madrid are looking at him probably 
the Real Madrid rumours have been exaggerated purely because it's the international break and they're currently facing defensive issues, people. Uh, moving away from that, speaking about defenders that aren't linked with clubs, but there's issues. Uh, apparently, we've received somewhat of a boost around Tommy Yasu and Calafuri. I'm big up Tommy Yasu. I want you both back. I'm probably a lot more optimistic about Calafuri. Tommy Yasu came back against Southampton and got injured again. We also we all know Calafuri suffered an MCL issue to his left knee while playing against Shakhtar in the Champions League. Um, meanwhile, since moving to the Emirates Stadium in 2021, Tommy Yasu has been dealing with a number of injuries most recently the japanese international has been sidelined due to a knee problem he suffered in july people apparently after the current international break according to the daily mail calafuri and tomiyasu are both expected to be available for arsenal which is a positive because now ben white's going to be out for a while and we all know with timber obviously we have to play a bit of a smart game with timber's fitness because i I mean, we're in November now and he's been back for a minute, but he is still working his way back from an ACL injury. So we'll have to see, but it would be nice to have everybody fit. We've been dealing with several injuries, people. Obviously, Saliba's missed a game due to suspension. Gabriel's even been in the trenches. Zinchenko and Tierney pick up knocks. Timbers picked up knocks. Tomiyasu's a no-show. Calafuri's been injured. And, you know, you're hoping nothing happens to Kivio, who is still linked with a move away. Arsenal will accept Gabriel Jesus' transfer offer. Arsenal's set to entertain offers for Gabriel Jesus in the January transfer window amid questions over his long-term future at the Emirates. I don't buy that in terms of in January, if I'm honest with you, but it's looking quite dark where Gabriel Jesus' future is concerned. Kivio is likely to agree to a loan exit from Arsenal in the January transfer window. Now, where you look at Tommy Asu, Partey, Jorginho, uh, Gabriel Jesus, Kivio, you can make a case of all of these players leaving in January or in the summer, but does it make sense? Already stretched squad, whether you rate them or not, surely it makes sense to sell them in the summer. And also, Kivio is always going to be linked with a move away. If everybody's fit, game time is going to be a struggle for him, really and truly. But we did hear reports that, you know, Arsenal want to sell you outright. He was linked with several clubs in Italy in, in the summer. Nothing came of that. Maybe the rumours were exaggerated. Maybe he didn't want to go. Maybe the, the offers didn't make sense. Maybe Mikel Arteta said, you know what, you're actually part of the team. He's been linked with Villarreal, Sevilla, uh, AC Milan, Inter Milan, Juventus, could have went to Bologna. Apparently, sources say Arsenal would prefer the defender to move permanently, but acknowledge that would be a difficult task in the January window. It's believed a loan to buy deal could be the most likely option, but will only be sanctioned by the Gunners if their squad is back to full fitness. But how many times have we seen everyone come back to full fitness and then there's injuries again? Does that make the most of sense? I don't know. I'm just a YouTuber humoring you lot don't forget to smash the like button people once again i did cover this yesterday but if you're if you've been living under a rock benjamin white has had a minor uh, a procedure or surgery on a it says a knee issue and some of that actually said joint so i'm not too sure we've had this man's been playing through the trenches man um It'd be nice for him to just be able to get back fully fit and play without pain. Arsenal and Newcastle are among the clubs that have been scouting and monitoring Ajax midfielder Kenneth Taylor since the start of the season. 22-year-old, I wouldn't have looked at him admittedly as a game-changer for Arsenal, but good technical level, decent player. Been linked with Arsenal, Newcastle, Villa and Napoli. Don't really think that's the guy, but I wouldn't cry if we did sign him. And where we were linked with Hato and Lissandro Martinez, who obviously didn't sign for the club, we signed Timber. The Ajax thing kind of, even Tommy set for the AD agenda, the Ajax to Arsenal link, it makes sense if I'm honest. So naturally, we're still going to be linked with him. Allegedly, Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs and Manchester United have lodged legal notices reserving the right to seek, pardon, pardon me, a compensation if Manchester City are found guilty of serious charges among the 115 alleged breaches of Premier League financial rules. So I thought I'd say that. And yesterday, I don't know if you saw, I know many people see Trossard and probably foam at the mouth right now, but Arsenal have been trying to tie Leandro Trossard down to a new long-term deal. Sources have told Football Insider there's been interest in the player from Saudi Arabia, which is one of the reasons the clubs are keen to extend his contract. I mean, in the summer, you've got a decision to make, but again, for me, it wouldn't make sense letting man go in January, especially if we don't address these areas, people. So I'm not too sure. But let me know your thoughts on Ben White's injury, on Calafuri and Tommy Asu's return to fitness, what we just saw with Trossard, what we saw with 115 charges. What do you make of the CEO stuff we went over, people? Do you think there's any feasibility in that we could get an Izaka, Jokerez, a Vlahovic, a Sesko, any of these guys in January? Check out the rest of the content. Make sure to hit the subscribe and notification bells because there's bare content to come out. Most importantly, I want to hear you lot's thoughts. You lot 
commented a lot in my last video. It was lovely to go through your comments and reply and see different points of view and all of that kind of stuff. So let me know your thoughts. Most importantly, stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.